Hello, it's Chris England. Um, this is another one of my trailer opinion videos since it's actually been out for quite some time. Um, so once again, I am a lot later than I would really like to be, but I figure later is better than ever doing it, especially since the content. So this is the newest arcane hero we have, as we saw in the Life and Death Tempest Trials. We have Ganglut. So we have art by Tomoyo Asatani. We have very a very interesting looking scythe this time around for our big, big arcane weapon. And then for our voice actress, we have Yo Tai Chi. So some of the I'll go with some of the better ones I know of. Anzu Yokoyama from Prison School, the one who seduces uh, Shinya, I guess. Uh, we also have Deep Color and Scavenger from Arknights, and Rodney and Ayanami from Azur Lane. And for our first axe rearmed hero, we have a axe infantry. So we now have sword, breath, and axe. <laughs> And her kit does not disappoint once again. We start out with Iceberg. We have the Joint Distant Guard. We have Distant Stance. And then we have a very old skill, one of the more popular skills that's actually gotten its first tier four. We have Quick Repost Four. So at the start of combat, if the unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25% and the opponent is initiating combat, during combat, this unit gains an addition, a guaranteed follow-up, and then the first attack's damage is reduced by 25%. Honestly, this one kind of feels a little bit weird because the damage reduction doesn't feel like it's enough of a sacrifice. Like, personally, I would have preferred Crick Repost to have some kind of, like, speed calculation difference so instead of being like a guaranteed follow-up in it would add a certain amount of speed to the uh calculation kind of like a phantom speed a a ability that way it's not it goes around any null follow-up effects any kind of denial possible possibly but of course, we have our arcane downfall, the arca the demon weapon, ultimate death, uh, instant death hell. So of course, we have cooldown cap minus one. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, during combat, spectrum plus five, upon the foe cannot perform a follow-up attack, and then during a, this unit gets cooldown count plus one per attack, and then... Anytime it deals damage, they recover 7 HP. A very powerful weapon for any kind of axe unit early on. I've seen a lot of people give these to some of the year ones. I've seen people give them to Atlas. I've seen Kamala. I've seen Titan. I know KCB Ryan did a Titania with that one. Um, but I think the fact is that just the entire weapon is very, very self-sustaining. Another thing is that this unit does come with a lot of very good skills. The sad part is she you do still require a lot of inheritance in order to get every single skill. Because this one, you need at least two five stars outside of Ganglut. And that's for Distant Counter and then to Quick Repost 3. I'm very surprised that this skill has not reached the point where we have it as a four-star skill, especially since guaranteed counter follow-up attacks are not... very rare. And now on to our new heroes. Semi, in this case, we have the Coyote. We have Harden making his first appearance since his 
Fallen Form in Year 2. We have Daisuke Izuka doing the art. We have Nakatani Ka Nakaya Kazu Kazuhiro Nakaya doing the voice. So Sanada Yukimura from Sengoku Bazaara, Victor from Beastars, and Captain America from, uh, I believe, Marvel Future uh, MFA I wrote is what I originally wrote for his voice actor. I really don't remember the series. But once again, we have a Lance Cavalry, so hopefully we'll get a sword sometime soon. So once again, this is a very a unit that I, I have had on my list for some time as a unit that's gone a long time without a single alt. So it is very, very nice to see Harden get something more valuable than just having his fallen form with a distant counter built in weapon. <laughs> Now for his, he's one. He is the example of the still incomplete kit for a five star. But we do have the Dragonic Aura. We have the Surge Sparrow. Of oddly enough, this is a very a much more common skill than I thought it would be. We also have the Attack Speed Near Trace Three, a brand new one. But the biggest thing is gonna be his Coyote's Lance. So of course we're gonna get. Cooldown count minus one. And then he's going to get, at the start of turn, if he's within three spaces of an ally, he and any cavalry allies within three spaces get attack speed plus six. And if they initiate combat, they get a guaranteed follow-up. And then if he initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, he gets an additional attack speed plus six, takes 40% less damage from the first foe's attack, adds that damage, and then adds bonus damage equal to the number of spaces moved by either the foe or himself times three. So with this, I believe there is a max of nine points of damage in addition to just from being moved. I am surprised that they didn't give him some attack speed clash in this case because that would have been a very good synergistic skill. Um, but it is very nice. Once again, we see a guaranteed follow-up skill in a weapon, no less. So probably attack speed clash would be a high end on mine. And then also for his C skills, you could actually do either like goad or ward cavalry because you are going to be putting him on most likely a team that has cavalry focus because he's going to get his boot the buff that he gives is only going to be for cavalries now granted he does get the buff himself and then the other thing is that we're also seeing the first attacks damage gets reduced by 40 percent. we're seeing that a lot with a with a good amount of the units that we have um once again, because he is a cavalry, he does take advantage of the buffed damage. So I do honestly hope that we can get maybe some... Com I would be very interested in seeing some combined skills, like having the ability to do gold and ward and combine them into one single tier 4 skill that does both what they both do but better with everything that they offer but that's just for my perspective of the game um so what i would say what i do like about this is just the fact that he's support he's being we're bringing back very specific support we're bringing back a movement type support as opposed to a lot of units where they're just generic support <laughs> Now onto our four star focus, we have the last princess. Nina. So I've always said her name is Nina, but I get this actually works sense. She's the a staff infantry as a four-star demote. 
I am kind of sad that they decided to demote the princess instead of demoting, making a different character. Um, but we do have something interesting, a throwback to a something way back when Fire Emblem first started. And that is that both the art artist uh, Rika Suzuki and the voice actress Rei Sakuma did her voice in... At least Rei Sakuma did her voice in 1994 as part of the Fire Emblem drama CD. I know that they, I think they also did, the artist also did artwork for her in the past for a specific product. I did not make a note on that one. But for uh, Miss Sakuma's other voice actor roles, she has Kuro from the Super Robot War series. We have one of the voices of Euclid uh, Wood Hellsythe from Is That a Zombie? And we have Nina Purpleton from the Gundam Double, 0083 series, I believe. I am also kind of sad that we this demote is a staff unit. So the princess, who could have easily been a very good five-star, getting a staff version of herself, and then getting the demote. But we do start out with a very nice set of skills. We start out with, of course, the Recover Plus. We start, we have Miracle. We do have the Sabotage Speed, and this is our five-star skill. And then her Drive Defense is a four-star. So that means that she is, from a four-star, she is able to pass on Drive, drive Defense 2 to a unit, making Joint Drive Defense a little bit easier to work with. And then for her respite or sanctuary plus, any uh, any allies within two spaces get plus two to defense and resistance, and then the foes get minus one cooldown count minus one per attack. So this is a very this makes her a very very good defensive unit for or de support defense. Um, what you're going to probably want to replace is the drive defense because it doesn't offer as much um, protection and instead either get distant guard or close guard and then add the other one to her seal to make it so that the unit actually gets plus six regardless of who they're facing as w basically turning it into a tier three st uh, stance skill. Except for the, di it's, I believe it would be bracing stance three. So... I am definitely annoyed that they gave her kind of a lackluster kit in this sense. Like instead I would have been interested in seeing that speed, sabotage speed be the four star as opposed to drive defense, because I am pretty sure that we have someone who offers drive defense already. And I think that is Nana from year two. So we're repeating a lot of new year two units that had some kind of skill originally. I am definitely happy that Nina got, got added to the game. Oh, I actually just read that completely wrong. The Her heal skill is not actually recover, but it's physic. So it's the distance healer. Our as ascended hero, and who it will be, I already know. And I am deeply depressed by it. Awakened Blood. Tiki, once again, is getting a. So we gave the brave, a brave to adult Tiki, and they gave her young Tiki's clothes. I had no problem with this. However, the fact that they are choosing Tiki once again as an ascended hero is definitely something that grinds my gears. So for the starting point, this is a lot, a lot very, very similar to what the kind of complaint I had with Lynn, where they gave her too many alts. But in this case, between adult and child, Child has a fallen form, a legendary form, a harmonic form. 
Adult Tiki has none of those. The closest thing that she has is a summer alt from year one. That requires a lot of stuff put into her in order to make her valuable. Um, but we do have uh, Nekumi for the artwork. We have Moro, Sumire Morohoshi, so Pala Pala from Sailor Moon Eternal. We have Emma from the plot Promised Neverland. We have Acerola from Pokemon. And then I believe Lara Noah was from Dragalia Lost. So sad that the game ended, but oh well. Um, so we do have another red infantry for Tiki. I'm very hoping, hoping that we eventually see her wielding Falchion. And that would be okay for the child version. I would, be, I would definitely be okay if they just tried giving her something outside of just dragon stones. So we do have four skills on our Awakened version, as opposed to the two skills that we got off of Ganglutes, even with including, so, but only two of them are transferable. We have, of course, Iceberg. We have Speed Res Finish. We have Speed Res Bulwark. So she is going to be very, very tanky to magic units. She's also going to be very fast, which is an interesting aspect of her kit. And then she's also going to be healing a lot because both of her skills are adding HP heals. So with the total of being able to attack twice and dealing and having the either one of her or her foes specials active or it having her special active during the combat or acti activate before or during she's going to gain a total of 21 hp back then she also offers her own with everyone's skill so any allies within two spaces gain spectrum plus four during combat and then if a during that, for that same restriction, she takes from both AOE, from AOE specials, a damage reduction of 40% times the number of allies within two spaces, with the max being 80%. And then actual during combat, she gains that same spectrum plus four, and then reduces this um, first attack's damage from the foe by 20% times that same number with a max being 40. So if you have a team of only one unit missing, that then she's going to take, as long as she's within two spaces of both those allies, she's going to reduce damage from AOE specials by 80% and then reduce the first attacks, the foe's first attacks damage by 40%. A very interesting idea. I think this, I think, the this tiki would actually be a very good combination with august because of his staff but we also have awoken breath so effective against dragons adaptive damage and cc minus one then if there's a ally within three spaces she get, gets spectrum plus five gets cooldown count plus one per attack and then nullifies bonuses so Spectrum Boost, Attacking Breath, or uh, Multi-Phase Breath, and Lull. And then, under the same kind of thing, condition with a s ally within three spaces, we have, and then the foe has a Offensive Special equipped, and during combat, if unit's res is at least five points higher than foe's res, the first, the foe's first attack comes with a cooldown count plus one. So this makes her very similar to what Brave Tiki did, except for the fact that she's got higher speed, making her a little bit more balanced. I would be very interested in seeing what she performs. So once again, I really can't think of a way to deal with her kit, aside from giving her distant counter in her seal slot, making her a very, very dangerous foe to deal with. Kind of like what Brave Tiki has, but in a different way. Mm. 
Also have a new unit, and once again, this is a unit that has has been <gasps> semi playable. Elise, not Elise from Fates, but Elise, Marth's older sister. We saw her way back in Year Three as the support backpack for Duo Marth, Duo Winter Marth, and ever since from that point up till now, she has been unplayed. As she has not got, this is her first actual entry into Fae. So we do have, unfortunately, since this is a unit that does not have a actual presence on the banner, she is automatically placed into the three and four star pool as a staff infantry. So we have for her art, Wa uh, Sumi Sachiko Wada. For her voice actress, we have Sumi Shima Shimamoto, so Ishizu Ishtar from Yu-Gi-Oh! Flora from Berserk in 2016. Another voice of Euclid uh, Wood Halsythe. And then Mitsuba Okita from Gintama, very early in the series when we actually dealt with, I believe, the Aizen Sosuke look voice alike. So we do have an a, another kit that's kind of lackluster. We have the Attack Res Ideal as her 5-star. We have Attack Res Gap as her 4-star skill. So this is the... Unfortunately, since Gap skills are currently locked to Tier 3, it does make it a 1-unit a change as opposed to using something to get the Tier 4. We do also have Restore for her heal skill, but the best thing on her is Trilemma, the staff that was originally introduced on Maribel, a five-star five star locked unit. This is a area of effect staff that deals, gives tri triangle attack or a triangle advantage skill. So it's a buff of more damage if you have an advantage, less damage if you have the disadvantage. And then her special is going to be Healing Light. So we got two princesses. Both of them missed the five star the five star ability to be actually good. And we gave Tiki not only another alt, but we gave her the ascended alt. I'm very much hoping that we get something beyond what we have for both Elise and uh, Nina, especially Fallen version, since we do have we do have Medius, or even legendary forms would be very interesting from my personal perspective. Legendary versions of every single um, kidnapped ver uh, princess. S <laughs> our flower we have our spark we have our attack the uh, rearmed weapon so one other thing that i will probably mention that this trailer is not mentioning is our ghp which is mathis brother to lena i guess to be fair he was originally a very bad unit in shadow dragon but that doesn't really make any sense to be that that dull so he is done by uh, Nekomochi. We have, once again, Reio Tsuchiya, so Tsukasa Suo from Ensemble Stars, and that's really all I can think of. Um, he does come with the Vulture Lance, so we are getting, we do have now Vulture Blade, Vulture Axe, and now Vulture Lance, so all we're really waiting on is Vulture Bow. Now, technically, we do have Vulture Bow in the form of Plague, the Plagian Bow coming off of uh plaguey and raphael but that's a seasonal locked weapon it's we're really more looking for something that's a little bit more obtainable 
He also has Blazing Wind. To synergize with his weapon, attack chill attack defense 2 as his 5 star, and rouse defense res as his 4 star. So we do have a couple of units that do actively start with rouse, rouse as a 4 still skill. I believe the first one to actually do that was Hilda with rouse attack res. Um, I won't say anything about Mathis. I actually think that he's really good. Especially compared to the fact that his original versions in both um, Shadow Dragon and New Mystery are absolute garbage in terms of what they can offer. Uh, New Mi Shadow Dragon did buff him a little bit, but it didn't buff him enough to validate having more. It didn't buff him t to the point where he can kind of survive on his own. And then the same thing happened with... New Mystery, where while he did get a actual buff, more of a buff, he's also got a lot of comp competition with like Luke, Rhodey, Cecile, and then any unit that can reclass into Cav Cavalier. He used to be really good in the original unit. So, on to my picks for high value. I'm going to go ahead and say that Gang uh, Ganglut is definitely the highest value unit here. The rearmed, her rearmed weapon is definitely very useful for very slow units or units that just don't want the opponent to get a follow-up. Having a distant, another unit that offers a distant counter as well as a distant counter upgrade. Having quick repost for, and the joint distant guard is kind of like an extra thing. It's not necessarily the most interesting. Um, in terms of the next pull, while I don't really like the fact that they chose Tiki for the Awakened Hero, instead they could have chose maybe like Nagi, would have been an interesting choice. Um, we do have a very, very well-built kit with the two skills that buff speed and res, that buff the difference between speed and res. We have a damage reduction with the with everyone. Or altogether. And then her breath is a upgraded, somewhat upgraded version of Brave Tiki's remote breath. I will definitely say that I don't think that she had I think the best thing is that she is gonna be part of the normal pool anytime soon. So it makes it easier to pull for her. Um in terms of what Harden offers, I do definitely like the fact that he is offering the um cavalry specific support and the fact that he has a his c slot is open so it opens the gate for using goad or ward you can easily also do i think fortify is the only thing that you really want to use simply because you're not going to be interested in doing any kind of attack speed buff since they already get that if I were to change his A slot to something a little bit different, I probably would choose Clash because he does not have he all he does is have guaranteed follow up and has high speed. Having the denial fault, having the uh, nullify penalties definitely would be a little bit more interesting in terms of what he can offer, especially since he is a cavalry unit. Um, I'm gonna point this out multiple times again, and I think hopefully this will be the last or second to last. But both Nina and Elise are princesses that are very heavily undervalued in the original games. In Shadow Dragon, you don't play with Nina, uh, Nina at all. And Elise only comes at the very last to show the use of the Alm Staff, which I'm very surprised that they have not given her. Um, but it's also the fact that they are staff units, which are inherently one of the weakest units in Fey. They're both four-star demos, with Elise being added straight to the three- to four-star pool. And they're both infantry units, which means that they have a lot of competition. I do love the fact that they're being added. I definitely do love the fact that... I especially love the fact that we're getting Nina, or Nina for the first one, and then Elise finally gets her own version. But I feel like the treatment is kind of kind of subpar to be pre precise with 
out anything else. The only unit that I think actually got a very good upgrade was Mathis, and that's just because Mathis was originally very weak. Um, I will say that the value that's pulling for that, once again, uh, my Megas gripe about rearmed heroes is they now have changed a lot of normal banners from I don't necessarily need to pull this to I probably should pull it because this unit is not going to come back necessarily. She's not going to be added into the normal pool. I do eventually hope that we do we get at least one rearmed hero per weapon type added to the normal pool. And they don't necessarily have to have the what what like what the weapon offers. It can just be like uh spectrum plus five and then heal. That's all that we all all that they could really do, and then add that to the basic pool. And then you don't even need to, you can just say that like as long as they have something else like as the other thing too for any rearmed hero especially for both lif for lif it's a little bit easier for gang uh uh ganglets it's a lot harder to get her weapon without transferring over the silver axe because currently there is only one unit that has a silver axe and that is gunter Anywho, this is my bat. This is what I think of the banner. I don't have any real reason to think otherwise. Thank you very much for listening. If you like the content that I provide, please consider subscribing to my channel. And I will see you in another video. Thank you and have a nice day.